This is Michael Popak, Legal AF. Donald Trump's lawyers screwed up again. And that's the reason this New York Attorney General $250 million fraud case, which is going to trial in less than three weeks on October the 2nd in New York in a state court uh, courthouse in front of Judge Angoron. It does not have a jury trial. The reason he Donald Trump is not getting a jury trial, and instead the judge that has been the bane of his existence, a Superman to Donald Trump's Lex Luthor, is because Alina Haba, his then lawyer for Donald Trump, screwed up the procedures in New York, didn't file the appropriate paper on time, and therefore Donald Trump was properly denied a jury trial, which he would like to have because everything that Judge Angoron has done over the last two years indicates that he is not going to rule likely in Donald Trump's favor on the big case, given all the other intermediary rulings, most, if not all of which, have been upheld by various appellate and federal courts. Um, if this is the same guy that's going to rule for him uh, or rule on his case, Donald Trump would rather have a jury, but he's not going to get a jury. So let me clear up number one misconception flying around the internet. This trial that starts on October 2nd is going to be a bench trial, meaning judge only, no jury. Sometimes, even when it's a bench trial, judges will use a jury for a select purpose as fact gatherers, as you know, for a certain to develop certain facts you know, through the adversary system in the courthouse, but not here because of Alina Haba screw up. Let me first talk about Judge Ngoron and what he's already done. Then I want to talk about the unique powers under Executive Law 63-12 of the Attorney General and why we're here under a bench trial and what her burden of proof is, because it's not what you think. And then we'll talk about the Alina Haba screw up and why they are stuck with Judge Ngoron. Trump hates Angoron. He has said as much in his social media postings over the last two years, calls him a leftist, a Marxist, Marxist a socialist, um, he's incompetent, and everything else. Judge Angoron, so far, just in the two years that he's had the case, has, dis has denied Donald Trump's motion to dismiss the case early on last year and did so by calling it frivolous and sanctionable because all of the arguments that they had raised over and over again had already been raised and rejected in prior proceedings. So he's dismissed, uh, dismissed or denied the motion to dismiss and called it frivolous. But that's not all he's done. Judge Angoron has also sanctioned for contempt Donald Trump and ultimately Alina Haba related to his failure to, to properly and timely turn over documents sound familiar, and hide them at Mar-a-Lago. We know that because Alina Haba went to Mar-a-Lago in order to look in the desk drawers just a week or two before the, the execution of the search warrant by Jack Smith. I'm sorry, by the Department of Justice and the FBI. So, so far on the scoreboard, Motion to dismiss by Donald Trump denied and called frivolous and sanctionable. And Goron sanctions Donald Trump for contempt, and he has to pay a fine that, that was running per day. I think it got up to over $100,000 for his failure to comply with discovery requirements. Uh, that's that's the second thing. Donald Trump tried to get away from Angoron, try to take the case to the commercial division of the courthouse, and that got denied. He tried to go to federal court and argue that the entire New York Attorney General anti-fraud case against Trump and the Trump Organization and all the executives and his children somehow violated his civil rights. That was denied. He went to, Trump went to Florida to try to get a federal judge, first a state judge, and then a, a Judge Middlebrooks to try to stop any efforts of Letitia James to go over where he hides his money, which is inside of a trust, which is based in Florida. That was denied ultimately, and almost found to be sanctionable by Judge Middlebrooks, right? But the reason, so this is not a judge from Donald Trump's perspective, that he wants handling the actual decision and judgment as to whether he and his organization and his exec executive children, other than Ivanka, committed fraud or are, are engaged in persistent fraud, which is the standard under Executive Law 63-12, in which he's been sued. But the reason he's not getting out from under Angoron and at least getting a jury 
right? As bad as the jury could be, they couldn't be any worse than Judge Angoron is because Alina Haba screwed something up two years ago. This is one of the reasons she's no longer handling cases for Donald Trump. She's, we reported on Legal AF that in the, uh, uh, in the uh, E. Jean Carroll uh, civil defamation, sexual abuse, and rape case, she screwed up so badly in terms of discovery and trying to get uh, documents and information that the judge chastised them, including Alina Haba, uh, Judge um, Kaplan, and said, you screwed up the procedure here. Uh, I don't know why this was the fight over the, the blue dress that was hanging in the closet that may or may not have had Donald Trump's DNA on it. The reason that never became a piece of evidence in the courtroom is because Alina Haba screwed it up and the judge called her out. Now let's go to the New York state procedural law. Alina Haba is a New Jersey lawyer at best. I'll give her that. She practices apparently in New York. She has an office in a regency, like a WeWork office rental sometime in, somewhere in Midtown, but she doesn't regularly practice in New York. And the CPLR, which is the procedural rule book for New York, which governs civil practice, is hard. It's complicated. It's thick. It's dense. It takes lawyers years to master it. And that's the ones that practice in New York like I do on a regular basis. But if you, if you go deep into the dusty chapters of the CPLR, the rule book, it says that when the plaintiff, in this case, the people of the state of New York, represented by the New York Attorney General, when they file their case right, and they say no jury trial, which is what they said, requested, because they're the plaintiff, plaintiff gets to ask for the jury trial setting, the defendant has 15 days from the filing of that piece of paper that's called the notice of commencement where the New York Attorney General tells the judge under the CPLR, we're ready, the case is ready to proceed. And that's a piece of paper that's unique to New York. There's a couple of other places to do it. But that notice of commencement has to be filed, is filed. And then if you're on the other side, if you're on the defendant side, and you want a jury trial, right? You got to make that decision early on in the case. You can't sit around and wait to see how the judge is going to rule for you or not rule for you or all of that. And now you've got Angoron, who, and I left out one other thing Angoron did. He put in a financial monitor, a former federal judge to monitor it's, and she's sitting there even right now, monitoring the financial transactions of the Trump organization, the money flow in and out and doing monthly reports to the judge on it. So you could see why. But New York, you know, New York is fair. And it says, you know, you can't get a peak, you know, a preliminary peak. Oh, I don't like this judge. I'm out. I want a bench trial. You got to make that decision within the first 15 days. And Alina Haba screwed it up because she didn't file her piece of paper required within 15 days of the notice of issue. Now, she's been squawking about it ever since. This is why we wanted a jury. This is why we wanted a jury. They'll try to argue it when they lose, and they will, to the appellate court. But they have no one to blame but themselves. And I've looked at appellate decisions at the first department uh, appellate division, which is the first level of appeal in Manhattan above the court that we're dealing with. And I've seen the recent case law. And they're, they're not going to take kindly to any argument that she screwed up the, the rules, didn't file the paper on time, and now wants the appellate court to bail her out. Not going to happen. So they have Judge Angoron. Judge Angoron, who found their motion to dismiss frivolous, who, who found them in contempt and fined them $10,000 a day, for failing to comply with their discovery requests, requiring Alina Haba to go to Mar-a-Lago and prepare an affidavit that says she searched through the drawers, same drawers that had the top secret classified documents for the Mar-a-Lago case, and then report back to the judge, right? The same judge that granted the attorney general's request for a, um, a financial monitor, so a former judge at their expense, Trump's expense, to keep an eye on their finances, and now this is the judge that's going to decide their fate. And, and I'm not even sure we get to a trial because under the powers of the New York Attorney General, which I said to you at the top of this hot take, 63-12. 63-12 is the robust powers of the New York Attorney General to stop persistent fraud. 
it is not the same standard as if like I sued my neighbor because they did something fraudulent towards me. It's a much lower standard. All she has to prove, right, in order to win is that um, uh, under this anti-fraud proceeding is that it is basically more likely than not that a fraud has been committed. And she's then entitled to ask for a series of what we call equitable relief from the judge, which is always the case. The jury never dishes out equitable relief. Juries are for damages. Judges are for injunctions to stop or prevent something or to, or to force something to happen. Some of the remedies that you get in court fall into the bucket of equitable, and that's for a judge to do. Some of them fall into the bucket of legal, and that's money damages, and that's for the jury to do. All the things, really all the things that a, a, a New York Attorney General Letitia James is looking for are equitable. Therefore, it would go to the judge anyway. Um, it, she wants disgorgement, which is ripping away and clawing back what we call ill-gotten gains, money that you, sh that you made that you shouldn't have made. The measure of that is how much the defendant, Donald Trump and the others, profited, not how much somebody lost right? It's not how much the banks may or may not have lost. It's how much you put in your pocket that you shouldn't have because of the persistent fraud that you were involved with. That's the standard and um, under this, under this anti-fraud statute. So the, some people might think, wow, this is a judge and there's no right to a jury. This seems unfair. The Republicans like to talk about two, -tier, two tiers of justice. The case law in this area about how strong the powers of the attorney general are, including her ability, she didn't do it here, including her ability to do everything she's doing right now against Donald Trump, she could have done in a summary, expedited, special proceeding way. She didn't even need to give him the right to have depositions or discovery. She could have done this whole thing in 90 days or so. Under her powers, she has special powers. She's like a superhero. And the special powers that the state legislature gave her or gave all the New York attorney generals is a summary process. She files a complaint. There's an answer. There's limited discovery. We go to a ruling. And the body of law in this area was developed in another fraud case involving another Trump entity. So therefore, Donald Trump. So he should know this really, really well. Because a former attorney general, Eric Schneiderman, sued the Trump organization or one of its businesses for another fraud. And the appellate court said, primarily, let's define the New York attorney general's powers under 63-12 and define that she has summary powers. And then she has what's called in New York plenary powers, which is a plenary trial has a bench trial, full-blown discovery, and depositions. And it's up to the attorney general to elect which road she's going to go down. And, you know, she wanted to give Donald Trump full benefit of the doubt. And so she went the full discovery, full trial route. Again, she could have went faster and done the summary route, but she didn't. So he got the benefit of that uh, attorney general discretionary decision to begin with. And he's always had it. That he and Lena Haba screwed up the jury trial issue says one of two things. She either really screwed up the issue and missed the 15 days, or they were willing to keep it with the judge and then take it up on appeal and, and knew they were going to lose in front of a jury, so they didn't even bother. And by the time they figured out the Angoron was so bad for them, having issued the monitor against them, found them in contempt, found their motion to dismiss and everything else in court to be frivolous. It was too late because the 15-day clock had already run. So you be the judge, but I have a feeling they didn't think the jury was going to be great for them until they figured out the judge was terrible for them. I'm not sure we get to a trial. Right now, pending, while we're waiting for the trial to start, our mo our, is a motion by the New York Attorney General to dispense with the trial and find as a matter of law on the record established that there is persistent fraud within the Trump organization, which takes the shape of him inflating and deflating improperly and illegally and fraudulently the value of his property. Inflating it artificially, including 
playing games with the square footage of his properties and his buildings, making them higher when they're not really that high in order to get the benefit of a huge value, screwing around with appraisals, not having property proper, properly appraised, lying to bankers and insurance companies as a result in order to get the biggest bank loan he could possibly get based on the value of his property. Since, since it's always a loan to value, you may have heard that concept. That means your loan is a certain percentage of the value of the property. If you're cooking the books on the value of the property, then you're getting more money from banks that you're entitled to. That's the fraud. And again, the standard is how much did Donald Trump and everybody else related to him benefit from that? Not how much the banks may or may not have lost. The banks may not have lost anything. Donald Trump says, I paid the banks back. Great. That has to do with if we were interested in looking at the amount of money that they lost, you might be making a decent argument. But, but since under 63-12, we look not at what they lost, but what you gained, this defense doesn't work. And that's also in the summary judgment papers. So you have the summary judgment papers, which says he's overinflated his value when he's wanted to take out big bank loans. Who cares whether he paid it back? He got the money he shouldn't have. And he's deflated it when he needed to like not pay taxes. And that is the fraud, right? That inflation and deflation, right? It's like inflation gate and deflation gate all in one. Um, so if she's right under the standard, the powers that she has under 63-12, which there are hundreds of cases under New York law establishing her powers very clearly, the, the lower standard she has, the what she has to show, right? To get what she wants, then she'll get the relief, the equitable relief she's looking for, the disgorgement, right? The taking away, the ripping away, clawing back of ill-gotten gains, right? The injunction against continued fraud by the Trump organization and the Trump people. And then lastly, the cancellation of his certificate to do business in the state of New York, meaning he and the children will never be able to be officers of a New York corporation and operate in the city of New York, in New York, ever again. Since he owns a number of properties there, that could be a problem. But these are all things that because they're equitable, back to our earlier point, my earlier point, because they're equitable, they're always for the judge to decide. The jury would never be deciding the remedies in this case. At best, even if they were on time with their 15-day request for a jury two years ago, they would get a jury for fact development, but not for the ultimate decision of which of the remedies, if the New York Attorney General, on behalf of the people of the state of New York wins, which of those will be used. It's complicated, but remember what I said at the top of the hot take. I'm here to clarify a misconception, and that is that this trial on October 2nd, if it goes to trial, if the summary judgments aren't granted in favor of the New York Attorney General, if we actually go to trial, it's going to be no jury and bench trial with Judge Angoron. I've explained to you why that's not great for Donald Trump and why he may now want to have gone to a jury, but way back when, when he needed to make the decision, either forgot Alina Haba screwed up or they made a tactical decision. They'd rather live and die with Judge Angoron until they started seeing his rulings. I'm going to follow these things, catch these concepts, explain them to you, let them go. It's like a catch and release legal program. Only one place, the Midas Touch Network on their YouTube channel. You know you're watching me here right now. If you want to see all my work, go over to the Midas Touch YouTube channel. Subscribe while you're there. It's free. Help them get the 2 million free subscribers. Go over to Playlists, look for Michael Popak. You'll get my entire library of work right there. And if you like uh, hot takes, who doesn't like hot takes? Then you'll love what we do on Wednesdays and Saturdays on the Midas Touch Network. We curate the leading podcast at the intersection of U.S. law and politics, and we call it Legal AF. Yes, it's what you think. That's on Wednesday nights and Saturday nights. And then we put it on, on the YouTube channel for Midas Touch. And then we put it everywhere that you get your audio podcast from. Until that next hot take, this is Michael Popak, Legal AF. Hey, Midas Mighty, love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram, at Midas Touch, to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.